Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. In today's episode, we're going to be continuing on with our Series 8 content uh, featuring a team, as you can see, it is going to be based around Kyogre. Got a very old, uh, formidable partnership from previous formats in Ludicolo with the Kyogre. It's going to take advantage of that Swift Swim in the, the rain that the Drizzle ability provides from the Kyogre. And then you've got a nice support and cast of uh, a Lolan Marowak with that Lightning Rod, which is always useful to support the Kyogre and Celesteela, especially from those big electric type threats from opposing Thunderous Incarnate or Regilek and things like that. Urshifu with its Focus Sash and then the Thunderous uh, Incarnate as cells. But uh, this time a Prankster one um, providing Rain uh, Dance. Prankster Rain Dance. Uh, Thunder Wave support Swagger. Uh, which is an old commonly seen uh, kind of strategy. On it helps boost things up. Especially on that Celesteela as well with the Lumberry there. That can kind of get rid of the confusion straight away. And then Thunderbolt for a little bit of stab. So uh, the wide lens on there is interesting as well. Because it obviously helps out with the, uh, the, the lower accuracy moves like the Swagger and the Thunder Wave. This team though is a rental team that has been provided by Japanese player. Salpal Karex. I'll link all of their socials in in the description below and I'll also link their blog page where they've got a full breakdown of the team that they built, how they built it and the construct of all of that. So it's really interesting to have a look through. Definitely recommend checking them out and dropping them a follow on Twitter. So today, um, as I say, we'll be featuring this team. We'll have a couple of games with it. We'll remind you at the end of the rental code and we'll just have a bit of a catch up in general because it's been a bit of a crazy couple of weeks. So yes, it has been a crazy couple of weeks for myself. I don't know about you, but I hope you're all doing well as always. But what I wanted to get to before we get into our first match today is obviously Series 8 is kind of coming to a slow end. It's going to be finished in a couple of weeks, uh, but there is a Series 7 uh, or Series 9 ladder available on Showdown. So let me know in the comment section down below if you'd like me to continue on doing Series 8 content or if you would like me to revert back to doing Series 7, Series 9 slash, because they're the same, content that will be starting at the beginning of May, which is not too long away. So I'd love to hear, obviously the content is for you all to enjoy. So I'd rather do something that you want to see rather than do something that you'd rather not kind of see or you're not really interested in. Anyway, we've got a first opponent uh, playing Triple Genies. We've got the, the squad here. We've got the Tornadus, Thunderous, and Landorus here uh, supporting the Dusk Dawn Wings. Dawn Wings, the Crosmo, which you very rarely see uh, with the Trick Room mode supporting that Alolan Marowak and uh, Tapulele. What's the chances? Like, I was surprised to see Alolan Marowak in this team. And then we come up against one. Madness. I tell you, madness. Okay, so I think our own Thunderous is going to be pretty. Uh, if we had a, if we had the Defiant one, it would be useful. Maybe not so useful uh, in this match. I think Urshifu going to be really useful uh, in general. Marowak of our own, helpful, but it will make it difficult with speed ties and things. I don't know if we're going to be able to stop the Trick Room per se, um, but. Uh, we could. Oh, we need to lock in. Let's just go Ludi. Marowak and Urshifu, I think. Let's lock in with those four. This is going to run out of time. Obviously, me chatting far too much. Going to time out. We don't want that to happen. We'll go with a little bit of a more solid kind of lead. At least we can pressure our opponent as well with the Kyogre and Ludi. Especially if they decide to go down a Trick Room route with the uh, the Dawnwings and the Cosma. I can see them leading. Yeah, the Thunder is coming out. But I mean... It's a pretty nice switch for us to go to something like Marowak here, you know, if we want. Just to give um, the Kyogre a little bit of protection against that opposing Thunderous that may decide to max. It's likely to go for an Airstream, though, if anything. Um, and the Tailwind definitely going to come up from the opposing uh, Tornadus. We could just max Kyogre here, you know, and try and remove the Thunderous in one fell swoop. And the thing is, um, if... I mean, we could prevent the Tailwind as well, you know? And we don't really have a way to do that. Because <laughs> we don't have a go. I mean, we could protect Ludi. And then the next turn, switch in Marowak. I'm just conscious that if I switch in Marowak here, we probably take a lot of damage from the uh, the um, the Max Airstream from the Thunderous. Because I don't think you go for the Max Lightning here. I mean, we might be able to catch them off uh, by them going for it and utilize the lightning rod, but I don't know if it's very likely. If they're not a soul vest as well, like Kyogre should be able to kind of knock them out. 
And at least if the Marowak kind of stays like intact this turn we've got to protect the next turn to kind of utilize the Kyogre once again because the yeah, streams aren't going to be hitting us for ridiculous damage we should be able to take them and i feel like this lead double genies it does make things a little bit difficult to kind of get our rain mode mode going like straight off the bat so see how we can pull this one round Kyogre going for that Dynamax. I do love Dynamax Kyogre. I really do. I do love it so much. It's just such a versatile Pokemon with the Dynamax ability, you know? There's a Tailwind. Come on. Try and smack us with a Max Lightning. Come on, let's do it. Let's see it. Airstream, we knew it. We knew it was coming. Yeah. Okay, well, into Kyogre. That's fine. You know, that the, the, the speed control is, is not an issue here. Because the Tailwind, we know they're going to be faster than us. Um... And boosting even further at the minute, it's not really going to make any difference to what we're trying to do. But we get a huge, massive chunk of damage onto them. Now the problem here is the, the double up, obviously, into the Kyogre. Um, do we actually just utilize Marowak to the point where we could potentially just attack with it? Because we could potentially max guard. But I also feel like they're probably... Because we should take a Hurricane. We could ally switch and be that player couldn't we or we could just detect i think we detect marowak i think it's a safer play and then maybe ally switch the next turn be that player we're gonna be that guy max darkness good job we protected there um yeah okay this this makes the hurricane a little bit more impactful but i'm thinking that the tornadoes might go after the marowak here just to remove it from the field uh, although they, they, there's a good possibility they fish for... Wow, they got Heat Wave. Huh. I don't know why you wouldn't... Why you wouldn't go... Hurricane there. Because then you fish for the for the, the Confusion onto the Kyogre, which then gives you a little bit more room if you get it. Anyway, we, we remove the Thunderous from the battlefield, which is always useful. Tailwind's still an effect for my opponent, so we've got to keep that in mind going into this next turn. Um, but the Marowak kind of doing enough, you know. I love the just the ability of it to come in just with the lightning rod alone, just to disrupt like that. Um, and we still have that sneaky ally switch play that we could go for at any point, couldn't we? <laughs> Tapu Lele. There's no point of going for ally switch now, just because. Um. They're gonna pro well. I mean, we could go for ally switch now. It depends what they do. I kind of really want to remove the, the tornadoes from the battlefield as soon as possible. Then it gives Ludicolo a bit more freedom. Mm. And we could potentially switch inertia view here. It's just risky because if we do that, then um, we could take a hurricane. We could take a hurricane. But again, at the same time, we could take a psychic as well. Uh, I don't know if you're really that concerned about the Marowak at this point. We might be better off just letting it go down. Um, doubling into the Tornadus. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do it. Heat wave, which is fine. Is that the only attack and move this Tornadus has got? Maybe. I think a Marowak takes it. Okay. They got Moonblast. Fishing for that. Uh, so we are going to be able to remove the Tornadus here. So that's fine. The end game should be pretty safe. If we were, were able to remove... The um, the speed control from my opponent. It means that Ludicolo can really utilize the uh, <clears throat> the swift swim when it comes onto the field, which is always nice to be able to do. Uh, so they've got one more turn of Tailwind to take advantage of, and it's going to be Marowak. Uh, okay. Well, I mean, the end game for us is pretty good because we've got Urshifu to come in, and we got Ludicolo. I think it's just about. Um, did we even preserve both? Because I think Ludi, how many turns of rain have we got? We might want to preserve the rain for a little bit later. That's my only thinking. You know, we preserve the rain for a little bit later on. Um, and then we can utilize Ludi to create an endgame. I think I'm more worried about the, the tap later than anything else. So we'll try and target that. It might chase down the, the, the Kyogre here and we... Uh, well, nah. We're, we're going to lose Marowak regardless because they're faster than us. Poltygeist. Yeah. 
But this isn't, you know, this is fine. We get to bring in Urshifu here. Um, because their Tailwind Pit is out. We could bring in Ludi and just go for Muddy Water. But I'd rather get rid of the the uh, the the Lele. And then we can just use Kyogre to get rid of the Marowak, you know. Uh, it's, it's a way easier. Way easier option, especially with the Scald. We've not got to worry about um, anything missing. And we still got our Sash on our, our Urshifu. So we're sitting in a good spot. So the Wicked Blow should pick up the Knockout onto the Lele. Might be very close, but you would imagine it is going to be enough. There we go. And uh, yeah, this one going to be a little bit of a quick one. But it could have been a lot scarier, I guess. But I think just the, you know, the utility of Marowak in this one really stopped the Thunderous from being able to do very much in it. And I, I guess, you know, it's a pretty straightforward battle. But it just goes to show how well the team can function in just a very linear kind of sense. Very good game to my opponent. And we'll move on to our next game of the episode. Okay, next up we have a Tyranitar, Dusclops, Salamence, Ferrothorn, Tapu Fini, and Zamazenta. So, a bit staggered there. I was just like, where's the, where's the restricted? But it is there. Um, Sand with Zamazenta. It's a really nice option. You know, you've got Trick Room coverage there for the Ferrothorn and probably a Trick Room mod with the Tyranitar and the Ferrothorn. Um, and then a bit of a Speedia mod, potentially um coaching on zamazenta can support like pretty much the salamence the ferrothorn or the tyranitar and even the tapu finny to to a certain extent just trying to think w what's the best option for us to kind of go down this this um this time around i feel like urshifu is a good option but at the same time we have to be careful around the zamazenta and the uh the tapu finny and the the uh the, the men's coming out i think what we could do because we don't have Taunt on the Thunderous. Um, it's like I don't really want to lead my reign. Although it's still so powerful, you know? And it really makes it difficult for my opponent to uh, to kind of capitalize in that in that, that situation, you know? So I think what we'll do, we'll lead Ludi Kyogre. I think it will bring Celesteela. And... Yeah, Urshifu makes more sense probably than the Marowak here because the Marowak are going to have a hard time against the Titar that's more than likely to come, you know. Uh, whereas the Urshifu can deal with that pretty easily and it gives us a bit of more of an offensive threat for something like the Ferrothorn in, in, a, in an end game, which Kyogre and Ludia are going to struggle with quite a lot. So, this is a nasty, like, a nasty matchup because, yeah, we're going to see the Titar. But, I mean, the thing is here... What we can do is we can still, we can just double into Dusclops, you know. Uh, Ludi with the Life Orb is going to, even in the sand, still do a bunch of damage to the Dusclops. So we're going to want to kind of try and avoid hitting the T-Tar here. Just because um, of a potential weakness policy. So I'm going to go for Hydro Pump and I'm going to max and get our weather back up. Um with the Kyogre. We'll see what the T-Tar does. It may max as well. So there's a chance that they could retain their sand. But if they go for like the pr protect play, which makes a lot more sense, and then the trick room, then, you know, we've got a small chance to uh, to get rid of the Dusclops here. I don't know if it's going to be enough damage. Probably not. Um, but at least with our rain up, it puts us in a bit of a better position. And even in Trick Room, we'll be hitting last. So our rain is guaranteed to be up going into the following turn. Uh, making it a little bit easier to kind of manage. But the T-Tar going straight for that max here. So probably going to see uh, likely a max rockfall. But So it's kind of a good thing that we've probably not went for the T-Tar. Just regarding potential <laughs> weakness policy there. Because that's the one thing we want to try and avoid. And if we can deny the trick room, then that's huge. When we see max guard, that's good. That's good. That's good. So they're not getting full utility out of their max moves, at least. And it means that Ludi will stick around. Whoa, it does so much damage. Okay, now this is where it comes into play. Now is a life orb hydro pump in the rain going to be enough? You would imagine so. Come on, Ludi. Don't let us down. My boy. Here we go. Let's get this. Let's get it. Yeah, there we go. Rain is too OP. 
<laughs> so we deny the trick room, which is amazing because now we got the opportunity to go after that T-Tar this next turn. Max Geyser and Hydro Pump or Muddy Water um, or even Leaf Storm if we want. And without the sand up, the T-Tar's really not going to appreciate taking any sort of water type attack. So yeah, I mean, we've got the, the Mence coming in, but I'm not really too concerned about the Mence, you know. It's probably going to be able to take down Ludi. Can do some decent-ish damage to Kyogre. But with such a tank, you know. Um, we'll go for Hydro Pump and that Max Geyser now. And uh, I think the combination here will be enough to get the T-Tar, for sure. So, Ludi, let's do this. Let's do it, let's do it. I wonder how much a Life Orb Hydro Pump will do to the uh, the T-Tar, you know. Wow. Like, literally nearly picking a knock up out onto the opposing T-Tar. That's, uh, that's actually nuts. That is actually nuts. Um, Salamence, Joe Wing Beat. Yeah, so we'll lose Ludi, unfortunately. Um, but, I mean, Ludi's done so much work here, you know? Do love Ludi. Do love it. Do love Ludi. And uh, you can see it's Life Orb meant. So, yeah, we're going to get the, uh, the geyser off. And again, like, Max... Oh god, we've maxed it twice in this match already. Um, in this in this episode, you know, both times. It just feels like that they're, they're always the really solid option most of the time. And this is what I like it against Sun Teams as well, you know. Um what's gonna be better, I think, Celesteela. Because they can get the sun up. If you've got a check for Venusaur, that's all you need really is the check for Venusaur. Something like, you know, like uh, well, you've got plenty of options. Like, Tornadus is a, is a great one, obviously. Um, but yeah, I mean, you've got so many options there to uh, really take advantage of. Uh, what are we going to do here? We go for a fly, maybe? Um, or an Iron Head? They're going to go coaching, I think. I'll come back to the Sun matchup in a minute. We'll try and address this turn right now. Um, now, we could Rock Slide. We're not going to get really much onto the Zamazenta. And what's going to be better for us, really? I think getting rid of the Salamence, because at least then Urshifu has a way to hit the, the Zamazenta for good damage, especially um, because we've got the Sash there. I think I'm just going to Max Geyser, the Salamence, and uh, Rock Slide. No, it protects. That's not what we want to see. That's not what we want to see at all. Ooh, Snarling. Okay. <laughs> Making things a little bit more tricky for us. Because the problem we're bringing in Urshifu now, well, before we get rid of the Menses, the Urshifu's in a way more tricky situation. We kind of want to have the, the Sash intact uh, to approach the, the, the Zamazenta matchup. And this rock's like going to do zip to this Zamazenta. Donk. Let's see. Right, yeah, like nothing. Okay. Hmm. Rock slide. It's not. Uh, I'm worried about Wide Guard as well, potentially now, you know? So I'm going to go Iron Head and I'm going to go Thunder. And if we can get maybe, maybe the Paralysis onto the Salamence if this doesn't pick it up. Yeah, there's the Wide Guard kind of protecting against the, the, the Rock Slide and Water Spout, which definitely helps us out for a turn at least. If you can get the paralysis onto the men's though, that helps. And I mean, even an iron head and a thunder combined, the men should go down. It's not got loads of health. Like an iron head should get it. There we go. Okay. So, uh, yeah. I mean, we're fine now. We get the beast boost. Is that an attack boost? It is. Very nice. Okay. So, I think. Um, and we don't really have many. Other many options, you know, to go. We can go for Iron Head, Fly. Mm, Fly's probably the better option because it's it's neutral, Steel and Fighting, right? Um, and we'll just go Scald. I don't think they got yeah. The Scald's more powerful at this point anyway than the Water Spout, but I don't expect them to go Wide Guard. And we just see the cancellation. So very good game to my opponent. We pick up another nice win. So we'll have one more because I think we've got time for one more here uh, with this build and uh, see if we can 
maybe see a different dimension of the team because we've seen quite a lot of the Kyogre here. Maybe we can have a look at maybe some swagger combination with the Celestina. So we'll jump into our next one right now, friends. Okay, so next up we have Grimmsnarl, Raichu, Porygon 2, Palkia, Ferrothorn, and Tapu Fini. You know what? I'm really surprised. We're not seeing really any sun. And it's not like we're lower down on the ladder. We're like in, well, we're around 1,000 on the ladder. It's not super high. It's not super low though either. So you kind of think you're going to bump into a few more common teams at the minute but not today anyway we got the palkia not the greatest pokemon for kyogre to be going up against probably the best kind of counter for it in general um it might mean we have to go down a route with something like celesteela here and that, that kind of makes sense because celesteela can do a lot of work against things like grimmsnarl doesn't mind if the trick room goes up um it's not going to like the ferrothorn too much but doesn't mind things like uh, tapu Fini either you know um the Raichu complicates things a little bit because it makes it difficult to utilize Thunderous the kind of way we want. But if we can prevent the rain going up, I think maybe we go Celesteela. Let's go. Mm, let's go Marowak. Huh. Uh, no, let's go Thunderous. Let's go Marowak in the back. No, actually, we're there. Let's go Urshifu. Thunderous. Because I expect maybe the Trick Room to come out, potentially. Actually, no. I don't think the Trick Room will come out. We'll lead Urshifu in the back. I kind of would like Marowak. But I think Kyogre is probably just good to bring in general anyway. Uh, for end games. And, you know, the damage that it does, even with Water Spout, when it's resist, is still a lot of damage, you know. Uh, my opponent's team are generally quite slow. So you can imagine the Trick Room kind of getting to an end point. Where you've got Kyogre at the end. In an end game situation. Um, as long as we can remove the Palkia, I think that's the big thing. But I think we're going to be relying more on Celesteela in this game. Um, yeah, it's the Palkia coming out. Okay. Um, and this isn't this isn't too bad at all because we can swagger Celesteela and go max airstream here. Um, yeah, I think that's what we do. I think we swagger straight away. Because we'll take an attack from Palkia. Just let's hope that the Grimmsnarl, the opposing Grimmsnarl, hasn't got like fake out. Which could really disrupt what we're trying to do with Thunder S here. Um, I just want to get the Swagger on too. It's been so long since I used Swagger on Thunder. It's been, yeah, like actually years. The last format like that we really saw it was, was it, was it even a thing in 2016? Probably not. Early 2015 where we saw maybe use but then you're going right back to like 2013 where it was really prominent swagger thunder wave bulky thunderous horrible things to face <laughs> but let's see let's see what celesteela can do here i feel confident that celesteela can kind of pull us through this game it's all about what this grimmed no no we don't like the fake out <laughs> max hailstorm they're gonna get rid of the thunder straight away i'm very sad about this very sad you know it's one of those things though like Grimmsnarl doesn't generally always carry uh something like fake out so you, you most of the time you're kind of safe in front of it um not worrying too much about it but it is what it is we are in a tricky spot i can't bring the kyogre in because it just boosts the uh the, the damage output of this palkia um and the grimmsnarl could have something like thunder wave which would make it very difficult so i think hmm, i mean we could bring in urshifu but the thing is the sash is going to be broken by the hail which is never ideal so i think you know we're kind of forced to bring the kyogre the palkia is going to do so much damage to us but it might leave a little bit of room for Kyogre to get a Thunder onto the Palkia. And if Celesteela outspeeds Palkia right now and we don't see Thunder Wave from the opposing Grimmsnarl, then we do have the option just to airstream and go for a Thunder and hope that, that that combination is enough. Which it may be, you know? And I think it's probably our best option right now, right now, or the, the current situation that we're in. I don't like facing Palkia. One little bit. It's a light screen going up. It doesn't make too much difference for our airstreams. So we're still going to get... Yeah, we outspeed. And that'll mean that Kyogre should get the jump. 
Thunder's not going to be enough, but it is going to be in range next turn to go down uh, from, from Stellar Sealer. It just depends what uh, the Palkia does. If it goes for like a Max Wormwind, we're in a bit of trouble. Because then, okay, Max Quake. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, okay. We can deal with that. We can totally deal with that. That's whether or not we go for... Now we have to kind of attack Palkia with the Max Airstream. Probably better off just protecting Kyogre this turn as well. I mean, we could go for damage onto the Grimmsnarl. But I don't want to take a Spirit Break. It'd be nice to get the Beast Boost as well. It's just if they Max Guard, you know? And a Scald would be... <sighs> Did we just attack? Because I feel like Protecting's a little bit passive when we've got the Knockout onto Palkia kind of kind of locked up. Because even with a Reflect, I think we still get it. Yeah, we'll just go for the Scald. I think we get a bit more out of our turn here. And you can see the Grimmsnarl's not going for screen support. It's going for... It's probably going for a Spirit Break. Um, or maybe even Foul Play. It depends what it's got. But it's more than likely Spirit Break into Kyogre. But if we get the Skull, then that helps us out a bunch. I know we take the, um, the special attack drop, but at the same time, the burn would be so useful. Let's go. Let's burn this Grim Snarl. Come on, Kyogre. The light screen helping out massively. No burn. And Spirit Break. Okay, that's that's ideal. <laughs> that's perfect. So, I mean, yeah, we do get rid of the Palkia, but we still got, like, a bunch of Pokemon we need to, like, start thinking about especially like the tapu finny but we do have thunder it will help i mean they have got the light screen up which is going to help them a bunch um and we have just went down special attack wise with kyoga which is not ideal i wonder if an iron head an iron head with a plus one should get the grim snarl it's just whether or not yeah i think we just go thunder because it's I mean, we'll probably see a Muddy Water, right, from the Tapu Fini. Oh, the Grimmsnarl switching out. Arathorn coming in. Not ideal. Not ideal at all. And Finny just protecting. Okay, so we're going to take Iron Barb damage. Damage. We really need to get rid of the Finny the next turn, I think. I think... Yeah, we, we concentrate down on the Finny. Iron Head and we go Thunder. And I'm hoping that that is going to be enough. To get it. And then Ferrothorn's probably going to Leech Seed us. Um, but there is a chance we could flinch the Finny here with an Iron Head. And they can't really switch in Grimmsnarl in this slot. Then my worry would be Iron Defense Ferrothorn because I don't know if we're going to have a way to really beat that. Okay, that's probably enough to put it in range for an Iron Head. Plus one. No way. No way. No way. Okay. That's that's not ideal. We needed to be be knocking that out there. If we knock it out there, then this game gets so much easier. But we do get the flinch, which is pretty huge. Uh, the Ferrothorn going for the Leech Seed. Um, and that Finny in Ironhead range, I think, going into this next turn. So it does mean that we can potentially switch Kyogre out to uh, reset the drops. Keep the rain intact for later and get Urshifu onto the field that can pressure that Ferrothorn a little bit and then reset the the, uh, the Leech Seed damage. Because the thing is, I think we got Fly here. We avoid the Leech Seed. The Tapu Fini is 100% going to protect. Uh, and they go, I think, Leech Seed into the Celesteela, which would make sense. Yeah. And then the Fly, because it's Stab... You know, it will, should be enough to take the Finny down. Iron Defense. That's not what we want to see. That is not what we want to see. Oh, okay. This is going to make it very difficult to deal with. Rain does stop, but we do have Ogre in the back. <sighs> I mean, Wicked Blow helps, you know. Um, Did we go for it now? Probably not. I think... It might, uh, gives them the opportunity to go for it again. I mean, Wicked Blow kind of overwrites. I think, yeah. Well, mm. Okay, no. We, we detect this turn. We just preserve. Because I think it's going to be better if we have Kyogre and Urshifu on the field. 
at the same time, like I can switch Urshifu out the next turn if the Grim Snarl comes onto the field. I'm hoping that we're going to be able to get rid of the Finny here, which we should be able to. Yeah, okay. And get another Beast Boost. And then it means... Do we see another Iron Defense? Or do we see them attack into Urshifu? Yeah. Yeah, they go after the Urshifu, which makes sense. And now the Grim Snarl comes onto the field. And you've got to think, okay, well, I'm going to... They're going to fake out the Urshifu. The big problem would be if they fake out Celestina and prevent us getting the um, Iron Head onto the Grim Snarl. And we've got to hope that Kyogre, if they do go for a body press, the fake out body, well, the fake out body press is something that Kyogre can take. I don't know if it's going to be, but I guess plus three attack on... Uh, Celestia isn't the worst because a fly is still going to hit that first one for pretty good damage and then combine that with a wicked blow Now nah, they go after they go after they go after Celestina Body press probably gonna be enough Yeah, okay Okay, we're locked into that situation where we need to we need to just iron head and and detect I think Urshifu again it's a shame. Like, Kyogre's not putting on so much pressure for the Ferrothorn. But the thing is, the, just the additional chip, just any little bit of chip would be so nice in this situation. Um, we go for the Iron Head and we detect. It's as simple as that. Because the problem with Urshifu is we're going to get the Wicked Blow off, right? So it'll, over, it'll bypass any Iron Defense that we see. But the problem is that we're going to take uh, Iron Bob's damage, which breaks our Sash. And then Body Press is probably going to be enough. Ah, yeah, the reflect. Not ideal. I think my opponent hasn't used that this entire game. But we do get the knockout onto Grim Snarl. <sighs> Let's see what this Ferrothorn goes for. Leech Seed, maybe? Into Celesteela? Yeah. And that could have been an open there, potentially, for us to, um, to get a Wicked Blow off. Because now they just double tap into... Uh, Urshifu. Now what we could potentially do is got Iron Head. Fish for a flinch. We've had one already. It's not going to do very much damage at all. And then Wicked Blow. Even though close combat. Uh, I, I, let's see. If we get the flinch here. Wow, it does so much damage. Is that... Oh, it's a critical hit. Okay. Okay. Double crit. <laughs> Can a double crit get this? Can it save us against this Ferrothorn? Probably can now, to be honest. Oh, it's going to be class. It's going to be very class. Depends what this body press does. And if they go leech seed or not. Thing is, they need to get rid... Oh, they flinch! Oh, that is the worst turn possible for my opponent. I feel really bad. At the same time, I'm so relieved. Because <laughs> this Ferrothorn's horrible. The problem now is my opponent cannot protect in front of the Ferrothorn. Uh, in front of the Urshifu because of the... Just absolutely bust ability, and now Wicked Blow going to be enough to pick up the uh, the knockout there. So the Iron Head, we were fishing for the flinch, you know, we do get it, so we get very fortunate. But I mean, we put ourselves in a position where we said, okay, if we get the flinch here, it really helps us out. We're doubled up with a crit, though, that's uh, it's pretty brutal for my opponent to uh, to deal with. And then we see the cancellation, and I feel a little bit sad there because yeah, my opponent probably had the capabilities to close that one out without the flinch and the crit. So it is a little bit hard to swallow, I guess, for my opponent. But um, very good game to my opponents today. Hope you guys have enjoyed today's episode. We'll jump over now and remind you all of the rental for this team today. So here's today's rental team, friends. I hope if you do try it out, you have a lot of fun with it. We've had some nice games today, and we've seen a lot of the different aspects of the team and the battles and how it kind of functions, which is always really nice to be able to do. Big shout out to Salpal underscore Calorex on Twitter, a Japanese player who created this team. And do check their blog out. As I say, it will be linked down in the description below. So yeah, have fun with the team if you try it out. And remember, do please let me know if you want to see more Series 8 content or if you want to move on and see maybe something slightly different until the new series kicks in next month i'm happy to do whatever you would like to do uh, obviously want to kind of engage and try and cater the content around what you would prefer to see in a battle sense as well because i i'm myself a little bit lost do i stick with series 8 or do i move back to a series 7 format and kind of do that I'm not sure. So I thought I'd reach out, ask you all, because you're normally always so helpful. So have a great day, whatever you're up to. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you all for another episode very soon. Santa Lantica, and bye-bye.